everyone and welcome to the next episode of my van build series and in today's video I'm going to be covering the gas side of things. In the previous episode I covered the water install so we've now got running water to the taps and the shower um, and this time I'm going to be talking about gas and installing the gas hob. Just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a gas engineer by any means so I'm going to be carrying out the install myself and then getting it checked over by a qualified gas engineer. Um, and that way they can give me a certificate of conformity to the current regulations so we know that it's safe and it's been signed off and checked over by someone who knows what they're doing. I'd strongly recommend doing that if you're going to be installing it yourself or paying someone else to install it for you. Greg Virgo on YouTube made a really good video highlighting all the regulations so that's definitely worth a watch. So here I have an LPG safety reference manual which a colleague kindly lent to me and I'm going to be referring to this throughout the gas install so anything that I'm quoting will be out of this and this is from 2007 so it's a little bit outdated but I don't think the regulations have changed too much since then. So first of all let's have a look at the hob that I'm going to be installing. This is made by New World, I got it from Argos if you're in the UK and on the underside you can see only for use with natural gas. It comes with LPG nozzles and an LPG sticker so that's something you need to consider when you're buying your hob that is suitable for use with LPG. So I'm going to remove this sticker because we're not using natural gas we're using LPG and then I'm going to stick this this one on Okay, let's flip it over and now I'm going to show you how to change the jets for LPG. So you just need a 7mm socket, put it in here, you take these jets out, put that to one side, and the same with this one. Take that one out. Oh, why do I have to have such fat fingers? Come on. No, nope. my fingers are too fat. Let's try and get it out of this pencil. So I finally got both the natural gas jets out. One of the holes is larger, that's for the bigger burner here. And uh, then you've got a smaller hole for that one. So let's put them to one side and get our LPG jets out. Again, let's check them. One's got a larger hole, so that goes in the bigger one. And carefully screw that jet in. Nip it up. Oh no. It's very fiddly. nip it up and that's ready for use with LPG now. So on the hob we've got this threaded connection here so I've got this adapter which takes it from half inch to eight millimeter copper pipe. Because this is deemed as a permanent installation the pipe work has to be run in rigid copper or steel it's no good using flexible pipes on a uh, permanent install like this it has to be run in rigid copper so I've decided to use eight mil copper pipe and I'm going to be using a combination of threaded connections and compression connections. So first of all let me show you a threaded connection. So for gas connections like this you have to use a PTFE which is suitable for gas which usually comes in this yellow roll. So I'm just going to put some PTFE on this fitting here. It might be easier to take it off to wrap the PTFE on it so that's what I'm going to do. Let's take that off wrap some PTFE around here one two three four Let's do one for luck five 
There we go. I'm going to put that back on. Let's tighten this up. Give it a good nip. So I'm just following the instructions and putting this foam seal around the unit. I'm just trying to work out the safest route for the gas pipe. So I think I'm going to have it from the hob here, clipped up the back to this batten at the back of the cupboard with a local isolation valve for the appliance here. And then it will run through this cupboard, clipped up here, 90 degree angle down here, then out and along to the gas locker. And that will mean that all our connections are in one place here. We'll have a connection either side of the isolation valve and this connection here. So we've only actually got three connections in the van, three potential leaks, and then the rest is going to be solid pipe work out to inside the gas locker. So here are a few of the items I'm going to be using. Here I've got my local gas isolation valve. It's just a little quarter turn ball valve. I've got some P-clips for supporting the pipe work and the pipe work must be supported at a minimum of 500 mil intervals and 150 millimeters either side of a joint. Here I've got the pipe cutter, mini pipe bender, and I've also got some copper olives because they're softer than brass ones so you get a better connection with those and 10 meters of 8 mil copper pipe. Right, I need to bend some copper pipe. I want a nice 90 degree angle. Put it in there like that. And then I pull it around till the zero meets the 90. That's good. And this end. So I've fixed the hob in place now. Now we just need to connect this gas pipe up to the isolation valve. I've cut and bent the pipe and I just need to put it in there and tighten it up. And then for a compression fitting, I've just got my little copper olive here. I'm gonna put that on. And then my isolation valve. And then that'll be tightened down on there when I'm happy it's in the right place. So that's that connection tightened up. I've run it round here to this isolation valve, which will be there. And now I want to drill a hole through here to continue the pipe work through to the gas locker. So I'm measuring and bending the pipe work to fit in the unit and now I've got to try and feed this in. Right so that's the hob installed. I apologise that I didn't record me struggling getting that copper pipe in the cupboards but I'll show you the run now. So this is securely fastened in place with these brackets here that come with the hob. I've run my copper pipe round with p-clips supporting the pipe work at regular intervals. Here we have the isolation valve local to the appliance. So it's just a quarter of a turn to isolate it. And then the copper pipe runs through this cupboard, through there, all clipped down, through there, and then along the back here, out into the gas locker down there. So let's have a look inside this gas locker then. As you can see, mine's mounted externally, but you can have them inside the van. They just need to be sealed from the living space. Um, and they also need a dropout vent in them, which is sized at at least 2% of the floor area. And the door must have an upstand of at least 50 millimeters above the cylinder compartment floor. When choosing a location for the gas locker, it should be at least 300 millimeters from the exhaust pipe. So from our gas bottle, we've got our high pressure hose here. And that takes the gas into this regulator. 
and then the regulator drops the pressure down to 37 millibar. So you've got high pressure on this side and low pressure on this side. The regs state that the regulator must be designed so that the capacity will not exceed 1.5 kilograms per hour and 30 millibar outlet pressure. And it can either be wall mounted or fixed directly to the cylinder. As you can see, the regulator I'm using is quite an old one. It was already in the van when I got it. It's a 37 millibar regulator for propane but the new standard is to use a 30 millibar regulator, which is suitable for both butane and propane. After the regulator, I've installed this uh, safety shut off valve, which is an electronically controlled solenoid valve. So we can turn the gas on and off from inside the van. That's a nice feature and it's a good safety feature as well, because as soon as you drop the power to this solenoid, it uh, fails safe. So it will cut the gas supply inside the van. Then I've got this test point here for carrying out a tightness test on the system. So for carrying out a tightness test, you'd connect onto here with a manometer, pump the system up to five times the system pressure. So five times 37 millibar, leave it for a period of time and see if the pressure drops. If it does, it means you've got a leak on the system. There is a permissible leak rate, which is, I'm not too sure for LPG, but I'm not going to be doing that part anyway. That'll be down to the gas engineer to do the tightness test. And then from here, we've got our solid pipe running straight into the living space all the way up to the cooker. This is all sealed from inside the van. All of these joints are sealed with mastic and um, it's all nice and gas tight. Right, let's connect to our gas bottle up then and see if we've got any leaks. So all the valves are closed on the system at the moment. This valve's closed, so I'm gonna connect this up to the gas bottle, and it's not a conventional thread on these ones. This is not righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. It's righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. So let's tighten it up. Just give it a little nip up with a spanner. There's also a maximum length that this hose can be, and that is 400 mil, I believe. So I'm gonna use some leak detection spray now, and just spray it on all the joints up to our gas valve and then when I turn this on if we've got a leak then we should be able to see where it's leaking from and with this leak detection spray you'll see this bubbling up if you've got a leak as you can see we have got a leak through this hose here right on the bottle so that's not a good start and then I'm just going to go over every joint give it a good spray And then if we've got any leaks, then we should be able to see it bubbling up. Looks good so far. Nothing there. It's like around the corner here. You can use washing up liquid and water, but it's corrosive to the copper, so it's not recommended. Oh, we haven't energized the valve yet, so that one won't be leaking, or it shouldn't be leaking anyway. Right, I'm happy with that, other than the leak on this hose here. As we can see, that's definitely leaking. So I'm going to get a new hose for this and um, replace this hose up to the regulator. Because it's only a really small leak, I'm going to carry on testing throughout the van. So let's go and energise our solenoid valve up there and then we can continue testing um, up to the hob. So when I energise the solenoid valve, we'll have gas up to this valve here. So we'll be able to test on this side of the valve. So I'm going to open the gas valve now. This will be on a switch once I've sorted out all the electrical side. So that gas valve is open and we'll have gas up to this valve under here. So let's check on this side of the valve for leaks. Yeah, there's nothing there. So open the gas valve. So that'll give us gas to the hob. Check in all of our joints. That's fine. And then finally, on the hob itself. Right, 
Right, it's time to test it out at the moment we've all been waiting for. So let's turn the gas on. Lovely. And this one, nice blue flame. So let's check to make sure the safety shut off valve drops the gas in an emergency. So let's drop the power to the gas solenoid in the locker. And there we go, kills the gas straight away. This hob's also got a built-in flame failure device so that if uh, it detects that the flame's gone out, then it shuts the gas off, so you can't leave the gas on. You hear that? And that, that's the uh, flame failure device. So there we go, that's our hob installed. I hope you found this video useful and you enjoyed watching it. If you did, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and if you consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already, that would be great. Don't forget, it's completely free to subscribe and if you click the little alarm bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. Take care.